maybe we can get to one of the questions you have yeah. there, Habibi. Um, one of the questions, well, this is the third question, but I'm going to put it right at the top. Uh, because if there's aunties and uncles here, and this is one of the questions that I, you know, every time I get an opportunity where I know there's aunties and uncles listening, this is the question that I want to ask. Um, and the reason why I want to ask is, because we have many questions as well, but one of these questions is regarding, um, like w w a couple of weeks ago, a brother messaged me, and he said, okay, okay, mashallah, you talk about how to protect yourself from zina, etc. But I want to do it the halal way. The halal way is not possible for me, because my father, or my mother is rejecting a sister or a brother because he's black or he's white. This even happens with, for example, no offense Pakistanis and Bangladeshis here, I love you all, may Allah bless you guys, with the same tribe. You know, it's like Somalians as well, no disrespect. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy because it's like, you're in the same tribe, you're Somalian. I'm like, why are they rejecting another Somalian? Not from my tribe. So this is the main question and one of the biggest reasons which I believe from what I've seen out there, the, the reason why the youth take the road to Zina. So how could one protect, uh, protect themselves and what kind of advice would you give to the parents who are making it hard for the children to do it in a halal way, the marriage? You know, it's a question that I've been a victim of myself. Me too. The confessions of some time back, mashallah. May Allah forgive them and forgive us. I look at it in hindsight and I say, Allahu Akbar, perhaps we were meant to be you know, advising the parents, my beloved parents who are here and who will listen to this later on. If you have not followed the method that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught you through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it comes to the marriage of your children, you've lost the plot. You think it's your child. It's not. It's Allah's child. It's just a test for you. The child you think, my child, my child, no way. You're just fortunate that Allah's allowed you to say that for a moment. He can take the child away from you now. And if he wanted, he wouldn't have even blessed you with the child. So don't think my child, tell yourself, Amana from Allah will take away anytime, will question me about how I brought this Amana up and what I did. So the, so the hadith, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُوقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ if someone comes to you wanting to marry and they have proposed to marry your child and their two things are decent if you don't allow that marriage Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling you there will be great fitna on earth and fasad you know what fitna and fasad means there will be trials problems chaos calamity issues because now you've encouraged sin so what are these two things? The deen. The deen meaning the level of religiousness, the level of closeness to Allah. So something decent. They don't have to be someone so pious, you know, so pious that, you know, they've got to be in Salatul Tahajjud every day before I accept them. Dear dad, you don't even read Tahajjud yourself. So stop it. You know, they must be totally honest. Dad, you lie as well. I've caught you lying so many times. You know, sometimes... Astaghfirullah, I shouldn't say this, but I feel like putting a CCTV in my own home just to prove to people who live with me sometimes, you did say this, didn't you? You know, the laughter means a lot of us would love to do that. Well, subhanallah, do it. Do it. And say, Dad, here it is. <laughs> they, they will be so good and quiet. And tell them, those sheikhs you are a friend of, I'm going to show them how you operate in the home. They will be so upset what about allah allah's watching all the time you're not worried about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if someone comes to you the deen is okay and the character is okay they speak to you with respect they're ready to respect your child they have a sense of responsibility let the marriage happen let it happen so someone might say oh but the hadith speaks about kufu you know what kufu is it means they need to be on a similar cultural line that's a misinterpretation of the word you have not interpreted the hadith correctly. You're talking of similarities in terms of the upbringing. So if you're brought up in London, you've been to the similar schools, you've gone up, you've had similar upbringing, you know what's happening, that's kufu. The color is never an issue. The tribe is not an issue. Bilal ibn Rabah was known as radiyallahu anhu. What was he? He was from Africa, subhanallah. Suhaib al-Rumi, he was from Rome, subhanallah. He was a white man. They were companions for a reason. If Allah wanted, they wouldn't have been companions, but they were companions for us to learn a lesson later on to say, hang on, hang on, hang on. Do not be a racist. 
Do not be a tribalist. You come from this tribe. Do you know a lot of us? And I'm going to say this to the older people. A lot of us. Even though we think that we're not racist, we are. Even though we think we're not tribalist, wallahi, search your heart. You think ah, the guys from my village are slightly better than the guys from that village. What village are you talking about? You know, the guys from up north are a little bit backward from the guys in London. I don't know if you've heard that. You know, we've got a problem with people who come from another area. Wallahi, in India, there is a river. If you're from the other side, you're a baddie. And if you're from this side, those people consider you a baddie. The same applies in the Philippines. If you come from the south, you're khalas. You're somewhat on another level altogether. Why? When the hadith speaks clearly, the verse of the Quran speaks about Adam and Hawa being created. Your forefathers, subhanallah. You are all from the family of the Prophet. Do you know that? Everyone, including myself, we are honored to be from the family of the Prophet. Which Prophet is the question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding because Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam is the closest common grandfather whom we know for a fact was our father. So aren't you from the family of the Prophet Nuh? May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. There you are. So if an African comes to you to marry your daughter and you happen to be, for example, Caucasian or Asian and he tells you, listen, I would like to get married to your daughter, for example. Look at his deen and his khuluq and see the interest of your child. Because in Islam, it is prohibited to force your child to marry whom they do not want to marry. It's a major sin. Major sin meaning you are, you are going to encourage so many other sins as a result. So remember this. If someone comes to you and your child, your son, your daughter has a keen interest and they are so keen for it and you happen to look at the deen and the khuluq, you have to, by the instruction of Allah's messenger, let it happen. If you don't, you're a racist, you're a tribalist, you're a whatever elseist and you know what? You're going to be caught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of people are struggling, struggling because they went to school with someone, they went to uni with someone and so on and so forth. And later on they came the proper way. Please come and see my dad. And the poor fellow comes to see the dad and the dad says, no. Why? Your skin tan is 3.3 degrees more than mine. I don't know if tans are measured in degrees, Habibi, but I just had to say it. Okay. Degrees because of the heat. You know where you come from Africa like me? Subhanallah. Normally in Africa, you find the hand is very dark. The reason is when you drive, you know, you, you, your hands are always burnt. So they look at your hand and say, this guy is extremely dark in complexion. So one guy says, let me open my button. See, see. Okay. May Allah forgive us. Wallahi. It's a problem. It's got nothing to do with the skin color, the tan. I come from Africa. Even among the Africans, sometimes they'll tell you, hey, this person's a little bit too dark. Hey, we're all Africans at the end of the day. Come on. Subhanallah. We're all human beings. Someone's got deen and khuluq. Please let it happen because you're going against Allah and His Rasul. No, but what are people going to say? What are people going to say? What is Allah going to say the day? What are you going to say the day you dragged into hellfire? I don't want to sound like a prophet of doom, but for this thing, there is a bit of doom coming in your direction. You know what doom is? It's a spray. You come across it? MashaAllah, 30 minutes. Jazakallah khair. You see, the brother says three minutes. Do you agree? That the Quran says, Al Hasanatu bi Ashri Amthaliha. Any good deed is multiplied by 10. You agree? Isn't this a good deed? So, wouldn't you like us to multiply the 3 by 10? So, we have 30 minutes, Habibi. Zakallah khair. Alhamdulillah. Shukran. MashaAllah. Uh, thank you. May Allah bless you. You answered the. F I was going to ask you forced marriages, but Alhamdulillah, you covered that. Uh, brothers, I will not leave the stage until I've gone through these questions, inshallah. Yeah? Um, then one of the next questions is how, how do I protect myself from zina? I think the questions are related. So how do you protect yes. yourself from zina? The reality is number one, number one. Everyone listen to this. It's not what you think I'm going to say.